Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today we're here for another mock draft, and with the NBA draft being in less than a month, obviously the draft lottery has been completed. This this gets more and more fun every single day, projecting where these guys are going. Um, obviously, Victor Wibanyama, he's going to the best situation in the Spurs, but there's still a lot to talk about with how the cookies are going to crumble after him. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video, hit the like button, and hit the subscribe button, turn on that bell if you do like uh, my, my drafts and draft content because we will be pumping out a lot of that here in the next month or so so without anything without any further ado let's go ahead and get started the Spurs getting the GOAT prospect this I mean this guy is a better prospect than LeBron James and that is saying something because LeBron James was literally dubbed the chosen one we've been trying to find the next LeBron for the last 20 years uh, here he is an unreal blend of scoring and defense this is a guy that projects to be top five on both sides of the ball in three to four years I mean he's gonna enter the league as a top 30 player not not a lot of people that can say that the best situation by far for him was the San Antonio Spurs too I mean that they they churn out a lot of talent and they are e elite at development they can really help guys with their jump shot but which Victor you know he has a bit of a slow release I know at 7-5 nobody's really contesting that but you know you can get that a little better now with the number two overall pick we got my Charlotte Hornets we're taking Scoot Henderson if we get Brandon Miller I will be upset now Miller does have star potential but Scoot has he's the number two player in the class and he has the highest floor in the draft I mean you talk a guy three level score he's already a pro uh, he can give it to you from the three from inside he can dunk on you he can finish around you whatever you want I mean the guy is he's a franchise point guard in my opinion and he is the consolation prize for uh, Victor Obanyama now we'll see about his fit beside Miller we'll see if MJ and Cupcheck want Brandon Miller but if you want Brandon Miller trade back because Scoot Henderson would be the number two overall pick in my opinion now at number three we have the Blazers and in all likelihood this picks getting traded but for this video we will be saying hey we got the Blazers picking at three he is the second or third best shooter in this class I mean 6-9 it's, it's really tough to contest that Grady Dick is far and away number one and then I think Jordan Hawkins has a really good argument for number two but he is a pure score at six foot nine as I mentioned a guy that he was born to put the ball in the basket we'll put it that way and you know legal troubles off the court they say that's all cleared up we shall see but right now we got the Portland Trail Blazers or whoever picks at number three going Brandon Miller I think the consensus is Victor Scoot Brandon Miller now at four we have the Houston Rockets and they've got the number four pick these top five it's also how my big board falls as a matter of fact so at number four we have the Houston Rockets going out getting him in Thompson insane length and athleticism I mean you talk about a guy that you want to be a franchise point guard here you go insane length insane athleticism at the point guard spot uh, very good vision as well now I know the question marks you know he can't shoot um, and he's been dominating against high schoolers but you know I think at the end of the day six foot seven 200 pounds he's gonna be a top 10 athlete as soon as he steps foot in the NBA I think he's gonna fit all right in the league now with the number five overall pick we have the Detroit Pistons and they're gonna be selecting Cameron Whitmore I got Cam Whitmore as my number five player in the class right now man he's got all the tools um, the Pistons need some more wings after trading away Sadiq Bay. Hey, they're going to go out and get another Villanova wing here at number five in this draft class. And Lord, he is athletic. I mean, you talk about him in Thompson being athletic. This guy is athletic as well. He's got all the potential in the world. Very, very good. Tough shot maker. Now, he, you will have some question marks at times with the shots that he takes. But, hey, he makes some of them at times. And you just got to tip your hat. I mean, those are unguardable shots that he's putting up and putting in. Uh, so Cam Whitmore there is going to be the number five pick in the draft. Now at number six. So here we are at the number six pick in the draft, which is, of course, held by the Orlando Magic. They also have 11 and 36. So this is a team here in Orlando that they just need, they need shooting and another two guard. And you look at this board, the two guys that provide that, Grady Dick, best shooter in the class, Jordan Hawkins, second best shooter in the class. Grady Dick at about 6'7", 6'8", Jordan Hawkins about 6'5". I'm going to have him take Grady Dick here, 
And if you're the Magic, you're obviously hoping Hawkins falls to 11 as well, and then you can just double up on shooters, and boom, you're set. You've got two, at least two good young pieces at every single spot in the lineup. So that's where Grady Dick is going to go in this mock draft. And also, I have him as my number six overall player, as you can see by the big board there. Now at seven, we have the Indiana Pacers. We have the Indiana Pacers, which is where I'm going to have Jerace. Actually, we're going to have Taylor Hendricks go here. Uh, he's going to be the backup power forward to start with, or maybe they start him over Jalen Smith, but he is going to be a forward. Uh, probably he's going to be in their long-term plans. I mean, this is a guy at six foot nine. Yes, he needs some development, but he is raw, and he has all the intangibles. So Taylor Hendricks out of UCF is going to be the, maybe backup at the, at the beginning of the year, but work his way into the starting lineup in Indiana alongside of Tyrese Halliburton. Um, we'll see what they do with Ben Matherin. Uh, they got a lot of pieces here. Miles Turner as well. So, yeah, that's that's who we're going to go with for the Pacers. Now at 8, we have the Wizards. The Wizards are just kind of stuck in a rough place right now. Um, I think I'm going to have them go Anthony Black. I have Black just slightly ahead of Kaysan Wallace on my board. It's just not updated. Um, so that's who we're going to go with here for the Wizards. They need that franchise point guard. Monte Morris is good. It's a backup. DeLon Wright, he's getting a little old. Um, they still got Bradley Beal. They still got Chris Stops. We'll see what happens with Kuzma this summer. But for now, we're going Anthony Black to the Washington Wizards. Now at 9, we have the Utah Jazz. And they're going to have the luxury to go out and select the best player on the board. Just because they have so many picks over the next few years. Got three first-rounders in this year's draft. So Jerace Walker is who pops off the board at me. Number 7. Um, they've got him listed as a power forward. I think in the league he's going to have to turn into a small forward, more so than a power forward, and just go out there and play elite defense. And, you know, his offense will come, but the defense is what intrigues teams right now, and he's going to go to Utah. And it's going to be an interesting fit, but I think he can grow and develop very nicely into a solid NBA player. Now at 10, we have the Dallas Mavericks. And they're going to take the best player on the board. Yes, it's Or Thompson. I know I have him at 10. I just don't think that, you know, Amin, he's not a great shot maker, but he makes up for it with his defense and his facilitating ability. Azor is not as good of a true point guard as Amin. So Azor is going to fall down the board a little bit, but not far. He's going to come in. He'll probably play the three for the Mavericks next year, or he takes Tim Hardaway Jr.'s spot. Either way, they're going to get a very, very nice player here with Azor Thompson, who they can develop over time. Now at 11, we have the Orlando Magic back on the board, and I referenced this earlier, but this is where Jordan Hawkins is going to go off the board. They already got Grady Dick. They need another young shooter, um, sophomore out of UConn. That's who the pick is going to be here for the Orlando Magic. Um, and I, I think I think this will be end up being a very nice pick for them. You know, he comes off screens very well. He, he shoots the three ball at an exceptional clip given the shot difficulty that he <laughs> that he has. So Jordan Hawkins here to the Orlando Magic. Now at 12, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kaysan Wallace continues to fall, but Maxwell Lewis, he's too intriguing to me, and they have too many guards already. So, I mean, where is Kaysan Wallace going to play? Maxwell Lewis, six foot seven, elite defender. Um, the offense, you know, you can develop that. It will come with growth. I mean, he averaged 17 and 6 this year, so let's not talk about he's not very developed offensively. I mean, he's a very good offensive player, but the the upside with him is the 3 and D aspect of the game where he can come in off the bench and lock up another team's perimeter player and then hit the 3 ball on offense. So that's what the Thunder are going to be getting there. Now, Kaysan Wallace ends his slide. Fred Van Vliet likely gone. Um, even if they do move Scotty Barnes back to the point, I don't know. I mean, he played there in college, but I don't know if he can play there at the NBA level. So, Kaysan Wallace is going to be a Toronto Raptor here. Um, even if they do move Scotty Barnes back to the point, this is just an insurance policy. Uh, and at four, or 13, we have the Toronto Raptors selecting Kaysan Wallace. Now, with the last pick of the lottery, we're going to have the Pelicans go best player available, and that is going to be Keontae George out of the University of Baylor. Um, they CJ McCollum getting old. Josh Richardson, I think, is about to hit free agency, so we'll see what they do. Their guard spots are looking a little bit uncertain, so they'll share that up here and get Keontae George out of Baylor. 
So with the 15th pick here in this mock draft, we have the Atlanta Hawks on the board. And honestly, what I'm seeing out of the Hawks, Jalen Johnson could be moving over to the three. They also have A.J. Griffin, DeAndre Hunter, Sadiq Bay, So they can play the three or the four. We have John Collins here who, you know, honestly, he could be getting moved on from soon. Um, you got Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, but those are really your only two guards. Aaron Holiday's cool. Um, honestly, I see A.J. Griffin play more of the two and then maybe Sadiq Bey as well. I don't know. They're, they're more Sadiq Bey, DeAndre Hunter, more swingmen. So here we're going to have them upgrade their front court depth and pick up Chris Murray, a power forward. Obviously, I mean, he's honestly exactly similar to Keegan Murray. He's just not a top five pick in the draft. He's, you know, he's still top 15, though, probably. Now at 16, we have the Utah Jazz. They go to race Walker in the first round now let's see if they i think right here we're going to try and have them get a franchise point guard and i think Jalen huchifino really could be that he's got a very very nice three level game you know from the three point line in between game the floater game is really nice finishing around the rim um, he's also a very good passer he really started to come on there towards the end of the year at indiana this year 13 and a half points a game that that's not fitting enough for what he was able to do for Indiana stepping into that point guard role. So I think that the Jazz can go, and of course this is Minnesota's first round pick, the Jazz are going to go Jalen Huchifino. Now at 17, we have the LA Lakers. Um, I believe this is their last first round pick for a good while. So they got to make the the most of it. They have D'Lo probably getting traded. Schroeder I think will stick around. Um, Austin Reeves, we'll see what happens with his free agency. They got decent forward depth with Vando Rui, and uh, Anthony Davis, and then Mo Bamba. So I think they could use another wing, and that's where I'm going to have Bryce Sensiballs fall in. Um, you see here, he's the best player on the board by a few slots, so that's who the Lakers are going to pick up here with the 17th overall pick, a guy that can really score it. Now at 18, we have the Heat. Um, are the Heat actually picking at 18? I know they were an 8 seed, but they're about to be in the finals. Anyways, we're going to have them go out and get... Probably another wing. I mean, they could use some more scoring. Um, yeah, they could use some more scoring. Kobe Bufkin's interesting. Another point guard because Gabe Vincent will be hitting free agency, but they also have Hero coming back, Alan Depot coming back, um, and you also have Isaiah Wong here. Honestly, I would love to take Isaiah Wong for them, and he stays in Miami. However, I am going to have them go with Jet Howard, um, a very versatile wing. You know, Duncan Robinson could be getting moved because of his contract. We will see what happens there. But a versatile wing that can play the two or the three and can score, and that's who I think that the Heat are going to target here. Now we have the Golden State Warriors, and I really like Gigi Jackson to the Timberwolves, at, or to the Trailblazers at 23, excuse me. But, look, the Warriors, we saw it firsthand. They need a power forward that's got some height on him. Kuminga's only like 6'7", maybe 6'8", if I remember. Gigi Jackson's 6'10", 6'11". Uh, I don't know why they've got him listed at 6'9". He's 6'10", 6'11". So they need a forward with scoring upside that can also defend. And I think Gigi Jackson has all the potential in the world to be a good defender. Um... I mean, yeah, he, he's an elite, elite prospect. Yeah, right here. Uh, oh well, six foot eight. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. He's not. Maybe not. He's, but still, you know, a little bit better offensively than Kuminga was, and or at least higher upside. So that's why I think the Warriors will be taking Gigi Jackson there. They just need a four that can do a little bit more than and can be a little bit taller than Draymond. Now at twenty, we have the Rockets back on the board, and I feel like this is just gonna be. A spot where, hey, let's take the best guy on the board, the guy that was a projected top three pick in the draft at the beginning of the year. We'll throw him in at the backup two and just see what happens. Honestly, I think that's the best course of action here for the Rockets with this first round pick they got from the Clippers. And Nick Smith Jr. is going to go off the board. Now at 21, we have the Brooklyn Nets. And this is interesting. They're going to be trading one of their first round picks. They've already said that. So in this case... We're going to have them select both of them. So they're going to take two project wings, I guess you could say. Whitehead, you know, injuries really hurt him this year, and he had another foot surgery, but he's 6'7", 6'8", built like an NFL middle linebacker, and I think he can really help a team when it comes down to the playoffs. Ryan Rupert from overseas has got a lot of potential as well at about 6'7", coming out of the NBL. So I'm going to have... 
the Nets here take two wings. I mean, they could probably go with a point guard, you know, Kobe Bufkin. Honestly, that's what I'm going to have them do, actually. They're going to go Derek Whitehead, and they're going to go Kobe Bufkin. I kind of kind of fooled everybody there, but Kobe Bufkin, a guy that can, you know, he can score it. Um, they got Cam Thomas. He, uh, they're probably going to trade Cam Thomas, to be honest. But, yeah, Kobe Bufkin out of Michigan is going to be the other pick there. Now at 23, we have the Blazers back on the board, and I think this is where, I don't know. I mean, they could use a wing for sure. Jordan Miller would be nice. But I feel like their biggest need is in the front court. They got Brandon Miller already. So Derek Lively, a guy that just absolutely dominates the paint at seven foot two. He's gonna be going to the Blazers here and eventually I think will be the successor to Yosef Nurkic. Now at twenty four we have the Sacramento Kings on the clock. And they could you know, they look center, they played some bonus at the four a lot with Bars and Lyles. At the four, and then Keegan Murray even shifting over. So I think they need another wing, and honestly, I'm going to have them go out and get the best win now wing. A guy that really, really improved his stock in March Madness this year, and that's going to be Jordan Miller. He's a very NBA ready player, six foot seven. Um, obviously, I'm a little higher on him than consensus, but I think he is a first round talent. Now, I haven't done the full scouting report on him, but just judging what I've saw in Miami's. Uh, NCAA tournament run, I think he is a first-round talent. I may be crazy, but I think he is a first-round talent. Now, with this Grizzlies pick, this is going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to have them go out and take another project player that they can look to develop in Leonard Miller from the G League Ignite. You could go Dylan Mitchell here. I mean, you can't really go wrong with either of these guys if you're a team looking to win now but also has room to take a shot on a guy. So I'm, I'm going to take Leonard Miller here from the G League Ignite for them. Um, Dylan Brooks probably on the way out. They could use some more defense, and I think he can provide that at six foot ten. You know, and he can move his feet on the perimeter. Now we have the Indiana Pacers back on the clock, and this is where Ryan Rupert's fall is going to end. I don't know all that much about him as a prospect, to be honest, but the Pacers, I mean, I know he's a developmental piece, and the Pacers have picks to spare, um, as you can see here. What, six, or three of the next six picks are owned by the Pacers, so that's why Rupert is going to go off the board here. Now we have my Charlotte Hornets back up at 27, and honestly, I mean, is this where we see Imani Bates come off the board? Kobe Jones? I don't know. I mean, I don't really want Jalen Wilson, Keontae jo uh, Johnson, Dylan Mitchell maybe? Honestly, I think we trade this pick. But right now, we'll just go Dylan Mitchell, a guy that we can try and develop into you know, a very versatile four-man. We'll see what happens with P.J. Washington this offseason. Uh, getting Miles Bridges back should help. But yeah, Dylan Mitchell at 27. At 28, we have the Jazz again, and we're going to have them take the best shot maker. I mean, I feel like he's the best player on the board by far now. Quavion Smith out of NC State. Um, obviously came back thinking he was going to be a lottery-type prospect. Kind of fell off a bit, but that's who the Jazz are going to select there. And then we have the Pacers back on the clock with another pick here. And honestly... I don't know. I mean, at this point, you don't want to take Isaiah Wong because you already have two point guards. We'll just go Jalen Wilson out of Kansas, um, a guy that can help out their front court depth, kind of like Taylor Hendricks. We'll see how much he plays, but Jalen Wilson out of Kansas, prolific scorer. And then we have the Clippers here. Not so sure about any of their point guards, to be honest. So this is honestly the perfect situation for me to put him in. And that's where Isaiah Wong is going to go off the board. Russell Westbrook, I believe, is hitting free agency. Bones Highland, I don't know. There's a problem with him on teams right now. So Isaiah Wong is going to the Clippers with the final pick of the first round. That's going to be my full first round mock draft today, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But with all that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to the like button. And hit the subscribe button if you did enjoy it at any point. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.